When it comes to climate breakdown, it's easy to lose sight of the big picture and what's at stake. I'm going to give you a super high level view of where we're at and where we're heading and two key differences between a two degree world and a three degree world. I'm Ed Brewster. Welcome to Zero Land. Right, this graph is made by Climate Action Tracker. On the left hand side, you can see that black line shows historic emissions ticking up to about 50 billion tonne CO2 equivalent. Now the dashed green line shows where emissions need to go over the next few decades in order to ensure that we stay below 1.5 degrees of warming. The big blue band at the top shows where current policies and actions take us. And that is to a world that by the end of the century is between 2.5 and 2.9 degrees warmer. If 2030 targets are met, and there will have to be additional policies and actions put in place to achieve that, but if they are met, then we might be more on track for a world that is more like 2.4 degrees. But as it stands, we're heading for a world that is quite conceivably pretty close to three degrees warmer. Currently, we're at somewhere between 1.1 and 1.2 degrees above pre-industrial temperatures. And we're already seeing fairly severe impacts. Whether it be forest fires or flooding, uh, but also less obvious impacts on food supply. So I'm gonna compare two degree and three degree worlds by looking at two key metrics, sea level rise and extreme heat. Sea level rise at two degrees is likely to be between 30 and 90 centimetres. Now there are 136 coastal megacities and they will all be significantly impacted by that. So that's potentially around a metre of sea level rise. That will be difficult to adapt to and require huge investment, a lot of relocation. But if we're more like three degrees, then we're looking at something uh, between 130 and 400 centimetres, so quite conceivably up closer to four metres of sea level rise. And you can imagine how difficult that will be to adapt to. There will be coastal cities that are abandoned, uh, coastal cities that are severely degraded by this. You can imagine the economic toll and the impact in terms of human migration. To give you a feel, at three degrees of warming in Miami, 2.7 million people will be affected. In Shanghai, it will be 17.5 million. Both cities will be largely wiped out. Extreme heat. What we're talking about here is potentially lethally high temperatures. So climate scientists talk about wet bulb events, and that's where temperature is high, and humidity is high, meaning that the human body can't lose heat by sweating and is at serious risk of death. Now in a two degree world, we have a billion people who are at risk of these sorts of extreme heat events. If we're close to three degrees, there are several billion people who are at risk. What we're starting to see is a central band around the tropics that is becoming uninhabitable. And these are just two key metrics. We've obviously got water scarcity, food scarcity, species loss, migration, and potential social collapse. And all of these are disproportionately exacerbated the higher that temperatures go. Coming back to our graph, we really need to be much closer to that dash green line than the big blue band. And that's why, in my view, governments should be taking much more drastic action to reduce emissions. Certainly, except in some uh, very particular circumstances in poorer countries, there should be no fossil fuel subsidies and there certainly shouldn't be any new fossil fuel extraction projects. And remember, every tenth of a degree matters. Every tenth of a degree will give us a world that is less diminished, less damaged. There are links to the data sources below. Please comment like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.